Welcome to the Press Box. I'm Ryan Thorburn, joined by Steve Mims. We're getting ready for Oregon's game against number 11 Washington State this week. Steve, uh, some actual injury updates for, provided by the Oregon head coach this week. Uh, Justin Herbert, as feared, as a fractured collarbone, will be out indefinitely. Um, starting linebacker uh, Kalana Apelu is out for the year with a fractured ankle, and the list of guys, including Royce Freeman, Breland, Mitchell, etc., are day to day with their injuries. So, some good news and some bad news there for Oregon. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. You know, Royce Freeman looked like that's certainly something that you expect to keep him out. I mean, you thought maybe that was going to be a four to six week deal. If they're saying day to day, maybe it's less. I'd be surprised if he played this week. I think the big thing for them with whoever's going to be a quarterback would be to get Nelson and Breland back. I mean, you get those two back. I mean, I don't think Burmeister or Rowley are going to be looked to stretch the field a whole lot. I think you're going to see a lot of the run game and a lot of some short passes. And, you know, we've seen Nelson as a threat over the middle. Same thing with Breland. I think whoever starts at quarterback is going to have a lot better advantage going in Saturday if they've got one or maybe even both of those guys back. You mentioned Taylor Alley, who also left the Cal game with an injury, and uh, it sounds like he might be able to play this week and will be battling true freshman Braxton Burmeister to be the starting quarterback for the Ducks probably through October. Um, tough stretch, even if Justin Herbert was in there. But unlike you know the last two Oregon teams, these quarterbacks can lean on you know a pretty good defense really, mm -hmm. and also you know an elite running game. So uh, it's not like they have to do everything. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see the battle. You know, we wondered, if, was Allie the number two or was it Burmeister? Allie was playing in garbage time. Then in a real key time, it was Allie. Then he gets hurt and goes out. I think before this, before Justin Herbert returns, I think you're going to see Braxton Burmeister starting game for Oregon. I don't think Allie's going to take them there. But I think Allie could start this week. I think they're going to suddenly try to speed up Burmeister's progress. You know, I mean, they, they probably felt like they had this year. They weren't going to need him going a little slower pace. I think they're probably going to try to feed force feed a little bit more this week. So I don't know, I, I would guess that it's a pretty healthy competition. If Allie's back in practice and we'll see a little bit more tomorrow, I think he could be the starter this week, but I think the plan for Oregon's coaches is gonna to be to try to get Burmeister up to speed and starting as soon as possible. I think you're right. I mean, it sounds like the main difference between the two is just experience. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor is a senior. Uh, as we mentioned, Burmeister is a freshman. I see Taylor, if he's healthy, uh, getting the nod uh, to start out, but you know, if he struggles at all or they lose a couple games, um, I think they'll be underdogs for a lot of these games. Why not throw Burmeister in there and see if he can do a spark? Um, speaking of Royce Freeman, obviously he's a, a great running back, but that is the one area where you can afford an injury or two. Um, Kanai Benoit, Tony Brooks James were just outstanding against Cal. Um, I expect uh, them to really lean on the running game this week. It's so unlike quarterback or quarterback. If you're the backup, you transfer right away. And we've seen that at Oregon. That's why there's this, you know, lack of depth there behind Justin Herbert. Whereas a running back, you basically had Benoit for three years and Brooks James for two, who sat behind Royce, stepped in last year when Royce got hurt a little bit. We saw Kanai again. Now Kanai goes over 100 career high when he's needed. It's kind of the one position, and maybe in college football, where you can use guys enough that they don't run and transfer. So when you lose a guy like Royce Freeman, yeah, you've got. You know, two guys that may be among the best 20 running backs in the Pac-12 are still there. As far as Apelu goes, I mean, that is where there is a hole in this defense. The, the defensive line has been doing a good job all season and getting better each week. The secondary, you know, um, has lost uh, Khalil Oliver to transfer, had some injuries, but they've played a lot better. Troy Dye is a man in the middle, but next to him, you know, A.J. Hodgkins went down, now Apelu. Uh, Blake Rugraff gets in there, so that's a little thin, little area of concern there. Yeah, you're looking at, you know, after Hoskins, you mentioned Apello, a guy who was a walk-on before this year. Now Rugraff, who is a walk-on, so you've you've kind of had some experience here next to Troy Dye. Fortunately, it's next to your best defensive player, can cover some things there, but yeah, it has been a revolving door at that second in line, inside linebacker spot. So that's your uh, weekly injury update, and we'll talk to you later in the week about the actual game. Thanks for tuning in.